welcome to King's Kids. It's great to be with you again today. We've had some crazy weather this week. Crazy. However, if you manage to build a snowman, we'd love to check it out. Talking about checking out what you've been doing, let's take a look at what you've been up to this week. Well done. Let's see how many Lulu's. <laughs> so last week's challenge. What was last week's challenge? <laughs> so last week the pasta, the pasta challenge. Okay, I'm just gonna start. Okay, last week the pasta challenge. James won it. Yes, James, my good friend James, the pasta James, pasta pasta James. No wait, pasta pasta James. Pasta pa. Doesn't matter. Thank you, so we are now ahead, it's 2-1 to us, yes! Oh, it feels so much better than last year. Okay, this week's challenge though, it's a tricky one. So what you need to do is get yourself a bunch of pegs, and this is a peg head challenge. So what you need to do is get as many pegs on your face or head, your hair anywhere, around this area, in 30 seconds. Most amount wins. There we go. On your mat, that's it. Go! Time! Can I count them now? This is gonna hurt. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, twenty-ten, twenty-eleven, twenty-twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, I cannot believe that James won that challenge. Come on guys, we have to beat the grown ups. That's a really good effort, Turbo. <laughs> this week, for our worship challenge, we're dancing to the song, Build Your Kingdom Here. Our series has been all about the church, and Build Your Kingdom Here is a song which is all about building God's kingdom on earth. So I thought it would be a really fun one to sing along to. Are your church? We pray, revive this earth. Build your kingdom here. Let the darkness fear. Show your mighty hand. Heal our streets and land. Set your church.
can you remember what we've learned already? Well, the church is the people, we're a family, we're discipling each other, working as a team and preparing for battle. Because we're in a battle. But the battle's already been won. And this week we're going to start looking at what the church's mission is. T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5... Lift off us. There's a really famous bit in the Bible where just before Jesus goes up to heaven, he tells his disciples what their mission is, and of course they had to go up a mountain to hear it. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee. They went to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some still had their doubts. Then Jesus came to them. He said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. So you must go and make disciples of all nations, baptise them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey everything I have commanded you, and you can be sure that I am always with you to the very end. And for people to become a disciple, they need to find out about who Jesus is. So it's our job to either show or tell them. That's our mission, that's what the church was created for, it's why we exist. So how do we do this? Why not take a moment and list all the ways that you think that the church could either tell somebody about Jesus or show someone who Jesus is? So I'd love to know what you came up with and feel free to tell me. And if you need help remembering all about what Jesus did, older kids, why not check out this video? It's only three minutes long. It might help you answer that question. So, you could give someone a poster about Jesus, that would tell them about him. You could tell them a story about something good he's done for you. You could show them a miracle. You could show them his kindness by cooking them a meal, doing their shopping. The list is endless, because there's just not one way that the church can tell people about Jesus. It's not a one-size-fits-all situation. You see, people are all so very different, and so they need a humongous mixture of ways to find out about Jesus. And most people not only need to hear about Jesus, they also need to experience and see what he's like too. So you have to show them what he's like. You see, everybody in the world can be kind. Everyone can be nice or feed someone who's hungry. Only Christians and only the church can show someone the unconditional, powerful love of Jesus. We can't just be nice. We have to be transformational. Which means we've got to do something that changes everything because that's what Jesus did and does. If you only share Jesus with someone one way, it's like giving them a comic. Comics are great, they're really funny, <laughs> but they don't give you a lot of information. And plus, the stories are stuck in little boxes. But telling someone and showing someone all about Jesus is like taking them on a 4D cinema experience. Not only is the picture 3D, but you can feel, you can smell, and you can move along with the story. People can experience Jesus for themselves. But most of the time getting to know Jesus doesn't just happen in a one-off event. You might have taken years to understand who Jesus is. You've been learning about him, some of you, for your whole life. Others not quite as long. Which is why we as the church have to think about how we can show Jesus to everyone around us continuously. You see one example is about sharing with your neighbours in your street. You see, maybe they don't already know you're a Christian. So the first job is you can tell them that you are. And then as you live your life, you they can see how you are kind and caring. They can see the love of God through you. Then maybe you can tell them about different things that happen to you 
greatness of God in your life. You can tell them testimonies about people being healed and then you can offer them prayer and then ask them, do they still need prayer? How is it going? And so by all these different ways, they get to know about all the different aspects of who Jesus is. And when we do this as a church or as a community, it happens on a bigger scale. And so people can see Jesus, not just through you, but through other people they wouldn't be able to ignore the greatness of who Jesus is because it would be surrounding them in so many different ways. We've had such a great week with you all today and we'd love to see what you've been up to. We are praying for you and if there is anything specific that you want us to pray for, feel free to message us. You can catch us on the email address. Have a great week everyone. See you soon. Bye!